November 2019, the Hukayat or Eagle Owls write history by qualifying for a major tournament for the first time. Teemu Pukki is already a living legend, with 10 goals firing his team into the 2020 European Championships. It's indescribable, people running to the pitch. I got some hugs uh, in tears and uh, saying how much it meant to them. This is for all Finland and uh, we showed what we, what we can do as a, as a nation. for all of the people in Finland who, who live football, so it feels, feels amazing. It's been a, it's been a long dream for all of us. The Finnish Football Association was founded back in 1907. 113 years later, the men's team will be competing at its first Euros. It can get pretty cold in Finland and in the winter, very dark. It's also one of the most sparsely populated countries in Europe. The country has a total population of five and a half million, less than that of some major cities in the continent. But despite the distinctly chilly conditions, the Finns are officially the most upbeat people on the planet, according to the UN's World Happiness Report. They say Finnish people are really closed and uh, rude, but I, I don't think that's the case. I mean, uh, it's a pretty, it's a country that uh, is, uh, how, would I, how would I describe it, socially introvert. That uh, we uh, like to hold our own uh, space, but uh, when somebody needs help, we always there to help. Yeah. And Finns need no help when it comes to inventing weird and wonderful pastimes, from wife carrying to swamp football. But their most important leisure pursuit is, of course, going to the sauna. The country has two and a half million sweat lodges, as the word literally means. That's one sauna for every two people. But sports-wise, ice hockey tops everything, and people don't blink when the president takes to the rink. As for football, the men's team, at least, have always been minnows and had never qualified for a tournament before. It's been a long fight to get to the Euros. In the history, a lot of disappointments, and even we have in Finland, we have our own word to football. In other countries, they play football, and here in Finland, we play potkupallo, which means like kicking the ball without purpose. <laughs> we have been always <laughs> it's a country who has not achieved anything. Okay? So, it, so it's, it's really strange to be in this situation now. Now the men's football team are kicking with a purpose, as a new chapter in Finnish sporting history dawns. So what's changed? We accompany HJK Helsinki's youth team coach Daniel Ersin to Lahti. This is the hometown of Jari Lidmanen. Finland's most capped and arguably greatest ever player with 137 appearances, hence the statue. Even in the days of Potkupalo, Finland produced a number of good players. Former Finland defender Petri Pasanen knows what's different now. When I played, we had Jari Littmanen, Sami Hyypiä, big names, big stars, and the hierarchy was there. You know, we got along just fine, but this is different, this team, you know. You have Puk, you have Lukas Radetzky, but those two guys are just, just part of the team. So, in that sense, I think it's a team that Finnish people can really identify themselves, because it's just a bunch of normal guys who really have shown that if you're a unit, you can achieve big things, although your material is a bit less than probably the most of the good teams. Regular guys, perhaps, but more than just normal on the pitch. The standard of football has improved in recent years, thanks also to the Finnish FA committing more resources to youth development. Nowadays, the coaches in Finland, they just have more information available through technology, through data, and they're more aware 
of the qualities they can they could you know make better when coaching those young players and you know when that happens all over the Finland the logical you know the next step would be that you just get more better players if that produces top players that's another thing but I think that basic level has risen up a bit the often harsh climatic conditions hardly lend themselves to outdoor football so the building of sports halls with full-size pitches means the youngsters can now practice all year and in addition to better facilities the philosophy behind training programs has likewise entered the modern age when I look back at my youth and also my professional career, I think uh, nobody ever asked me a question how things should be done. I was told how things should be done. I think now the, the coaching has turned more into the pragmatic way that you ask players, make them think by themselves and uh, you never tell them the, the, the answer directly and you lead them on and I think this is the right way currently and I think now we'll see in a couple of years players that will become adults and go into the professional world will, I'm sure this will come more and more there as well. Youth coaches like Daniel Ursin are shaping the future of Finnish football. The focus is on improved training for coaches and kids alike, working on skills, technique and above all personality development for the budding new stars. Sometimes we are too humble, I mean, like in uh, outside of the pitch and then we are too kind but we try to change that. Of course we have to teach them good values like respect the opponent and all these kind of things but, it, but I think uh, you have to be a little bit, how do you say it, uh, aggressive, yeah. The dream of a new golden generation is well and truly alive. Indoor venues like this one are a step forwards. The country's professional clubs are currently progressing in leaps and bounds. To be honest, this is not only for football. So if you play American football, uh, rugby, whatever, it's, it's for, for everybody. This has been a really important development, maybe during the last 10 or 15 years. Different clubs have uh, improved their facilities by their own. And this is creating a new, new phenomenon in Finland, which is old news in Central Europe, that we, we, we are starting to have our own training center, at least the biggest clubs. Did we mention before that it can get dark in Finland? The winter evenings are very long providing plenty of time to chat about the Eagle Owl's evolution and perhaps take a closer look at the secret to that success. You need to be more like a, some kind of a teacher or like a father. How do you, I don't know how do you say it, but something like that because uh, so short time that they are together and it's more about mentality. I can see in the beach that the players enjoy what they do together. What is their uh, like ambition when they're playing? What is those uh, and attitude when they're playing? You, you, you can get that also when you're watching that. What was that about needing a teacher? Just as well that Marku Kaneva is Finland's head coach. During his playing days, he was also an elementary school tutor. The clarity, how he speaks to the players with, uh, I mean, he's, he was a teacher, or he's, he's a teacher still, uh, when he, now he's of course has a, has a job as a coach, but uh, the way he talks to the players, the way he uh, compliments them, and uh, I think that's a uh, reason, re reason uh, respect in the in midst of players, yeah. Sometimes it's pretty funny up there when he's holding the meetings with this, uh, uh, the cane, he's pointing uh, towards the TV, and uh, no, we have a laugh, we have a laugh, and he's a, he, he's a guy who has a, Bit of bit of humor and self irony as well, so that's uh, that's important. Kanova, commonly known by his nickname Rive, has been to the European Championships before, in charge of the under 21 side in 2009. As a leader, if you're a teacher or head coach or coach, generally you have to handle individuals in the group and get them work together. And of course. Um, I've learned a lot when I worked as a teacher and, and, and those tools 
I got from that education I have a use as, as a coach as well. But I don't want to take all the honor. The honor belongs to the players and, and the whole team, including staff as well. The Eagle House high-flying achievements have been duly honored by the press, with the association's Media Day event attended by domestic and international journalists. And the media can always be counted on to conjure up a catchy name for a new phenomenon. We have this word, revolution, which is, comes from this name, nickname, Rive. It's happening now, the re revolution. You can stop the revolution. <laughs> Finland are living the dream, the revolution. No, I'm speechless, so uh, thank you, thank you, Finland, and uh, I hope I did you proud. Yeah. We're not going there just to lose, we, we, we will go there to try to get some points and, and even go through from the group stage. I hope that this will inspire and motivate all the people working with Finnish football, the kids, all the football players, the parents, uh, coaches, everyone.